This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News coming at you again from San Francisco with another in our series of radiological studies of pituitary disease. I'm showing you the films today of a patient who presented with fatigue, diminished libido, and nocturia on three occasions. So he was getting up to use the bathroom three times at night. Maybe a little bit more so during the daytime as well. Because the testosterone level was low, the physician suspected pituitary disease and obtained an MRI. So we're looking through the coronal images now, going through, looking for the carotid siphon and the pituitary gland. And the first thing you notice is there's a tumor here. Hopefully you can spot a tumor. It's this lesion. Is this a pituitary tumor? Actually, no, it's not. Here's the pituitary gland. <clears throat> Here's the carotid artery. Carotid siphon here, middle cerebral artery. This is the pituitary gland. Just a wee bit of a partial empty cella here, but otherwise a normal appearing pituitary gland here, here, here. So what is this and where is it? Well, this lesion is in the hypothalamus. It's actually in the third ventricle. Here's the top of the third ventricle. This lesion is filling the third ventricle. Maybe a little bit of hydrocephalus as a result of the third ventricle being filled by this tumor. And what you see here is a tumor that's partially cystic, these areas, this area, and partially solid. And the solid component is very bright on this in, uh, contrast enhanced image. Let's see if I can show you this sagittal films now. This is the mid-sagittal section right through the middle of the head, cerebral aqueduct, fourth ventricle, lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and you see this tumor is stuffed up into the third ventricle. Here's the pituitary and the pituitary stalk. So this is a tumor in the third ventricle and roughly compressing the hypothalamus. And that compression of the hypothalamus led to hypopituitarism, missing all hormones, and also diabetes insipidus. This patient's pan hypopituitary with diabetes insipidus. Again, solid, bright enhancement, cystic parts of this lesion as well. This is a classic craniopharyngioma, classic in appearance, no doubt about it, until proven otherwise it's a craniopharyngioma. This could be a pilocytic astrocytoma, but I seriously doubt that, you know, surgery will tell for sure, but until proven otherwise, this is a craniopharyngioma. The patient also has an incidental finding of a pineal gland cyst here, which is totally unrelated to the craniopharyngioma. You'll see these in about 2% of people. This is a small one. This one is, is not worthy of any attention. I showed you on a prior series, uh, these great veins that are draining the deep base of the brain, uh, where if you clot this off or it bleeds, you're, you're not gonna survive. And you can see that the pineal gland is intimately associated with those veins the one side, the other side, the pineal is right between them. And this is one of the reasons that pineal cysts are not often operated on. Pineal tumors sometimes are, but uh, it's a very difficult area of the brain to access with all the different dural leaflets and membranes, plus these veins being in the way. So it's a good scan to show that. But this is an example of a craniopharyngioma that's predominantly supracellar in its location filling the third ventricle, causing a mild degree of hydrocephalus, causing hypopituitarism, 
and diabetes insipidus. So again, this has been Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News. Thank you for uh, watching and uh, hope that you look forward to future uh, videos about pituitary radiology. Have a good day.